Ladies and gentlemen, Rick Avila. Shout down, how you all doing? Good to be here. Good to be here. Right. You know something? You start to feel a little older when the television shows you grew up watching are now on Nickelodeon. And why did those TV mothers wake up perfect? The hair was always done, the mascara was on. It wasn't that way in my house. I mean, my mom woke up like a real American mother. She looked, woke up looking like a gremlin. She'd come in my room at 6 o'clock in the morning, wake up. Wake up. Give mommy a kiss. Wake I ran to school. I said, fuck the sandwiches. I got to school. First book they give me to read in school, Dick and Jane. Now, I think it, this is a strange book to give a six-year-old, because you're in first grade just learning how to read. Jane sees dead. <laughs> Jane likes dead. Jane plays with dead. I closed the book, I played hooky, I went looking for Jane. <laughs> I said, where is this progressive child at? <laughs> I never met Jane. Maybe that's why I'm so fucked up. I don't know. <laughs> but I'm a native New Yorker. That's some New Yorkers here? And I'm tell I don't know something about that city. It wasn't easy for me growing up there being a Puerto Rican who couldn't speak Spanish. <laughs> the only Spanish I ever heard was at night. A half hour after my mom stuck me in, I used to hear her in the next room with dad going, Shine! Hey, Bobby! Hey, Bobby! Hey! So when I went to hang out with the Puerto Ricans in my neighborhood, they said, Do you speak Spanish? I said, Sure. Hey! Hey, Bobby! Hey! Then they all cut out on me. Except for that one kid. I play with you. <laughs> Guess that's the attitude I had. But most New Yorkers have attitude. Even the winos. Come here, you son of a bitch. Give me a quarter. <laughs> Come on, you bastard. I cleaned your windshield, you bitch. I shut you. <laughs> See, we're out in L.A. Because L.A., the winos drive up to you. <laughs> hey, like, 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 you have a hundred dollars? <laughs> Even the pigeons are weird in Los Angeles. Sitting in full lotus positions, meditating. You know, I like totally don't know if I'm going to fly. <laughs> I know it's a pigeon day, but like gag me with a bread stare. <laughs> Boston pigeons, they're very educated, smidly. <laughs> Still working on that thesis, no <laughs> I got this one sick fantasy. I like to catch a pigeon and shit on it. That's what I like to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just one. Yeah, fly now. Go ahead. Yeah, you have a nice day. I should mention that I don't promote. I'm not pleased with what's happening with these drugs today. I do not use drugs. I want America knowing that. It seems to me, though, that every city I go to, a different ethnic group tries to sell me smoke. Now, we have black people, fine, educated black people. You meet them, hello, how are you? Good to see you, nice to know you, nice to know you. Goodbye, sir, care, take care. Then you got that street black guy who tries to sell you smoke. Yo! <laughs> like that herb, y'all. <laughs> so once in a while you get a poem, yo, yo, I got your herb that's gonna make you swear. My smoke gonna make you choke my brain ass gonna fuck your motherfucking ass. I don't know why you Jewish folks laughing at you. Is he Jewish marijuana deals? So what do you mean it's not an ounce? That's an ounce. I've been in the business for 20 years. 
Don't tell me that I don't have good shit. You don't believe me? Ask my wife. Listen, not for nothing. Can I tell you something, darling? My Morris Baruch Hashem, he's got good shit. Now, Sam knows me. Oh, it's good shit. Puerto Ricans, boy, they sell smoke cautiously. Hide behind the bushes in the park. No, don't give me the money, man. Don't give me the money. No, don't give it to me. Oh, shit. It's Harazo Rivera. Oh, my God. Well, I thought I mentioned that I am Puerto Rican. My last name is Aviles. Aviles. See, when you're Puerto Rican, oh, we got one. I got a ride home now. <laughs> See, what's slick about being Puerto Rican is ethnically, you're in the middle. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you're not black and you're not white. You're just here. <laughs> the reason why a lot of blacks and whites don't intermarry, I would suspect. You don't want your kids looking Puerto Rican. <laughs> See, either that or there's an enormous sphere. The kid's gonna have this giant blonde nappy afro and one blue eye. <laughs> but I'll talk about all kinds of ethnic groups. I try to get next to other people's cultures. East Indians, I like to understand their culture, so what I do is I walk into the 7 Eleven. <laughs> I do. I say, excuse me, uh, Rappy, can I ask you a few questions? Look, I have no time. I'd like to talk, but I have no time. I am trying to run a business. You are trying to bother me. I have no time. I'm still confused. I don't understand sports. I don't understand. It seems like the more violent the sport is, the more affectionate the players get. After a football game, way to go, Bubba, way to go. Grown men grabbing each other's asses on TV. You don't see that in hockey. Because you don't want to grab anybody's ass who's got a stick in their hand. They kind of whack each other in the head. Way to go, Johnny. Way to get the puck in the neck. Why do they call hunting a sport? What's in it for the deer? You ever see a deer win a trophy? Scholarship to the Big Ten? I think not. They ought to make hunting bad. Make all hunters wear antlers. <laughs> that ought to even the score of a bit. Bill, wait! <laughs> it's me, buddy. I brought the course. <laughs> Golf. Now that's an exciting sport. Get to wear your own clothes. Even if you lose, you can say, fuck it, at least I look good looking. <laughs> Have signs in golfing matches. Little signs that say, quiet. Quiet. <laughs> Hardest work a golfer does is this. This is his job. Hits that ball, it rolls, it rolls, it goes in the cup. What does the golfer do? He goes, yeah. <laughs> Guy just won 50 grand. He's like, Because yeah. <laughs> he's a cool people. They don't get excited like football players. You ever see a golfer spike his ball? Yeah, I got that shit in. <laughs> Give me my money, my trophy. I wanted that. <laughs> so, nice to look out in the audience, see a lot of people involved in these relationships. And you can always spot people first starting to date. That's easy to spot. Because what do you do? You kiss in public. You don't give a shit. Oh, get on us, Chicago, at a red light. Hey, 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 hey. Walking down the street. Hey, 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 hey. Kissy, touchy, touchy, kissy. Hey, 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 hey. Another thing we do is like we call each other up for no apparent reason. That's right. You get on the phone, you get the number. Uh, it's me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Call you later. 
it's great in the beginning because when you finally do decide to have sex, it's usually that non-stop marathon lovemaking. This is what men are always promising. Oh, baby, I swear I can do this shit all night. <laughs> then you wake up and you do it again. Oh, stop this shit. Like I'm the only one who's ever humped in the fucking morning. <laughs> oh, you know what happens when you get laid in the morning? Yeah, you know what happens. You go into work, you look at everybody at work who didn't get laid. <laughs> That's right, you walking like you won lotto. Yes! Yes! Oh, I got me some. <laughs> I think women are a little more subtle. They kind of skip into her. Well, how's it going, Mary? Fine. It's a beautiful day. It's a blizzard, baby. What you do out there? But after a while, it starts to change. Because you women, you start to act like the police. Start busting us guys, committing that minor crime, looking at other women. Now, I'm not naive. I know women look at other men. You're just fast-threaded, ladies. A woman can check out a man without even moving her head. Just one motion of the eyeball. That's it. She's seen it all. She's doing like Morse code of the eyelashes to her girlfriend. Oh, did you see his dick? Oh, Lord have mercy. Let's put on makeup, talk about his dick. Mm. Problem with men is that we make it too obvious. No matter how gorgeous she is, every once in a while you do something stupid. You know, honey, I have to tell you, these last couple of months have meant more to me. Damn. <laughs> Honey, did you see that ass? <laughs> well, why don't you just whip out your dick and say hello? <laughs> and that's when you know that she loves you. Or she's cursing at you. In the beginning, there's no cursing. We're on our best behavior. Some of us put on little baby voices with each other. She used to go, what? You're not comfy. One pillow for your feet, see? I want to get my honey pillow for the feet, see? I'll be right back. Six months later, you're in the car with the same woman. You're driving like an asshole! What the fuck is wrong with you, y'all bring that See, either that or you get that silent treatment. She becomes a deaf mute. She's looking at you with that one eye, that like Cyclops eye. She gets that dark Vader voice going, Don't fuck with me. I'm not in the mood. <laughs> but that's not how it is in real life. In real life, your woman says, well, if you love me, then take me shopping. I tell you, when you find yourself going shopping with a woman, guys, you are not hip. You're not cool. You're working for her. <laughs> You're following this woman around the store like a pack mule. <laughs> oh, I'm so fucking happy. <laughs> Thank you, God. And you always pass by single friends. I, I, Tom, I, 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 I can't talk now. There's a big sale on glasses. Coming, honey. And I gotta tell you, 
Men and women, we shop a little different. Most men, what we do is we go into a store. We try something on. It fits. We buy it. We leave the store. Call us crazy. But I tell you, I've seen women shopping. A lot of you can leak through those clothing racks at warp speed. Assess garments at a fraction of a second. Brrr, it's a shit. Brrr, wrong size. Brrr. Woo! Woo! Comes out of the rack and they tell us that lie. I'll be right back. This is a lie. You are not right back. You're in that dressing room a while, and outside of every dressing room, there's always that chair. Guys, you've been in that chair. Took me a while to figure out the name of the chair. That's the asshole chair. Oh, you want to be in love? Okay, asshole. You just wait. And there you are, surrounded with all the shopping bags. And let's not forget her pocketbook. I can't stand the waiting. 25 minutes goes by, she hasn't formulated her own opinion. No. Somewhere in the relationship, I became her fashion consultant. Honey. Be honest. Does it make me look fat? No, it doesn't make you look fat. You already are fat. I love you anyway, but you're a whale. You can't fuck around. No, 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 you can fool about it, but I know. You can't kid around about the weight. You know why? Because you get no nookie after that. You might not get a meal after a while. Nookie's a very important thing. Because every once in a while, the relationship just gets kind of ordinary. We start doing ordinary things. Going food shopping and throwing out garbage and laundry. Wouldn't it be interesting if they started that way, relationships? You'd have men walking up to women in bars. Look, I know I don't know you, but... You think we could do laundry together? Oh, baby, can I fold? So when it does get dull and ordinary, some of us try to spark it up with sex. I know I did. Took her to a hotel with a heart-shaped tub. We're gone. Then the bed was this big round bed with satin sheets. And I'm telling you, I'm getting busy on my woman. I'm getting... <laughs> and my face is twisted. And there are mirrors all around, and I'm looking at myself. Face contorted, my back is sweating. My little skinny ass is like popping up in the sky. I got hair shooting out of places I didn't even know existed. I'm humping, I'm going, ah! Boy, you are one ugly motherfucker. <laughs> then I looked at her. The female orgasm. Mm -mm -mm. That's an incredible thing, like watching the woman you love going into an epileptic fit. <laughs> know what to do, stick a spoon in her mouth, call 911, or keep humping. I'm telling you, woman gets that orgasm, she don't want to stop. You, oh, ah, 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 ah. Baby, I'm tired. No! I want to get on top. Give it to me, Daddy! Right, me, baby! Ah, ah. <laughs> Excuse me. Perhaps I got a bit carried away. <laughs> I'm in Chicago fucking a chair. <laughs> What's gonna happen nine months later? A little stool? <laughs> I ain't chilling out shit. This is my special. Yeah. I believe in a 
equality, not only in the races, but in the sexes. And I might have done a lot of ethnic humor tonight, but I'll tell you, man, maybe if we laugh enough about this shit, we can end this shit, man. <laughs> And I might have rapped a lot about sex things, but I do believe in equality in the sexes. There is just no equality at a beach. <laughs> Women, you go into water, the water's cold. You're in that water a second. Dying. <laughs> God makes you righteous. <laughs> Men, we go into the very same water. I'm a man. I'm going in the water now. You hit that cold water, you come out where you know what happens. She notices it too. She's chasing you on the beach. Teeny weeny teeny. Teeny weeny teeny. Oh, let me see it in that ball. Calling you raisin dick and shit. It's a far cry from how we wake up, right guys? <laughs> Morning, honey. I love you. Come on, wake up, honey. You ever do that? Smack her on the head. Wake up. Come on, don't kiss it. Just touch it, baby. Never a hard on in the morning. It's a pee on. That's the most difficult pee pee to make. Why? Because you're up here. You got to get all the way down there. Well, I can't bend my pecker in an L. I know what I'll do. I'll step back. Maybe I can arch that sucker. But it's too late. You're spraying all over the place. Shorten out the lights. Not a pretty sight. You have been one dynamite audience. I thank you.